But dude, it's very nice. That's really good. And it's so good. Mmm. Goedemorgen from the Netherlands. This is our very first time visiting Utrecht, and we are out to try some more Dutch snacks and dishes. So come along with us on this Dutch food tour. All right, so we made it to Utrecht, and right now we are in the heart of Utrecht. You can see the nice canal going down and beautiful walking street, people boating, paddle boarding, kayaking. And we are here at our first stop of the day, which is De Oudemoenkelde. I don't know if that's right. It's pretty much a pancake shop right here on this nice waterway. It is beautiful right now. And we have a half-half pancake here. It's a Dutch-style pancake, so a little different than the one I'm used to in the U.S., but very similar to the one that we're used to in Germany. So we have half-half. We have a savory here, which is bacon and cheese. And then we have an apple and raisin version over here. She said both are very classics. This is like a classic savory version, and then this will be a classic sweeter version. I think I'm going to start with the sweet because that's what I'm used to for pancakes. Oh. So let's give it a try. It's a pizza. I'm cutting it like a pizza. Let's roll it up. So you can see the apple, bigger apple chunks in there, and then a couple of raisins. Okay, so here it is, nice a floppy roll. I'm gonna try it without syrup for right now. Mmm. Mm. Oh, wow. It's a freshly sliced apple. It's nicely baked in there, giving it a nice flavor. Phil doesn't really like raisins, but I feel like they're not too overpowering, so that's pretty good. Let me just dump some syrup on here. What is it? Schenkstrop, the original. The original. Let's try it again with the syrup this time. There are a ton of raisins in this one. Nice apple chunk with some syrup. So let's go. That's really good. There's a nice spongy texture to the dough. It's fried, but not too oily or anything. And it's this nice light batter, almost like a spongy cake. It's really good. So the sweet version, would you say this is like a meal or is this like more of a dessert? It leans more towards the crepe part, which would be like a nice light breakfast dessert thing. Because in America, we have a dessert for breakfast. All right, let me just separate this here, right in the center. Oh, he's so we're doing don't a divider. He doesn't want any of the raisins in there. That. So this is bacon and cheese. And she said that's the classic one of the hearty ones here in the Netherlands. And she also said this is a mouthpiece sized one in the Netherlands here. So she didn't say that. I know. <laughs> Oh, that is very nice. Bacon and cheese. Uh, but there's a sweet note to it. I don't know if I got maybe a raisin Did in there. Did you get some raisin or syrup in there? But check this out. You can see the cheese here in between the layers. So I think there's a good amount of cheese, but they put the dough on top. That's why you can't really see the cheese. When you just look at it, it's like a filled cheese one. And it's pretty cheesy, actually. Let me, let me see again. That is pretty nice. I really like this bacon taste, but what I want to try, I want to put a little bit of that strop, the shank strop on this one too, on the bacon. Mm. He says a little bit and it's a lot. Because as we, and by we, I mean we as the world, learned from America, sweet stuff works with bacon, or it should, right? Yeah. Yeah, so here we go. And it does work. Does it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks good. I want to try the bacon, so don't Dude, eat all of that. That's super nice. The hearty one is uh, feels like a proper meal. Bacon beats apple. Dude, bacon and cheese, it tastes like a toasty. That's so good. I think this is definitely my stuff with the bacon and cheese option. So this together was 15 euros because we did the half half. I think the standard would be around 13 euros for one with the two ingredients, but That's we wanted nice. to get a nice sampling. I feel like this is a great start to uh, a nice Dutch food tour. Absolutely. I also love absolutely the vibe in the city. It's nice that they let you separate the pancake. But check just out what's happening around us. We're sitting at this moat down here. The extra street is up there. And then the moat is right there. And there's so much traffic there, like proper sized boats. There are pedal boats, there are inflatable boats. There are stand-up paddling boats. They have water bikes. There's people up on the street everywhere. Right now there's less traffic, but I would say every minute there's like, I don't know, 30 boats. Look, there's way more coming. It's just a very unique feeling very unique city it's uh great so far good good vibes good vibes we finish up these delicious pancakes while enjoying the perfect people watching spot some of the tables are just faced towards the canal for the water show we saw many ducks dodging boats even floating dogs and the best boat ever 
I know which one Diana's favorite boat is. We could honestly spend all day here, but it was time to go into the city to a place where you all highly recommended in the comments. Some of you said this is where real Dutch people go to enjoy a snack or a meal, so we took your advice and ended up in a Hema. So this next place is a very well-known place in the Netherlands and a lot of you guys recommended it in the comments after our first video. You said we need to go to Hema, which I thought was just like a clothing store where you can get a little stationary objects. They have like cute little plushies and stuff. But apparently there's a whole food station. We came here for just some sweet pastries, but there was a whole cooking station and Phil ended up getting some savory dish as well. But I'll start off with this. So this is an apple flap. It's kind of like an apple turnover. It's like a common pastry here and one of the popular ones I think the Netherlands is known for a lot of apple products, so just cut it up here. I think this is a handheld item. Is it a handheld? I just wanted to cut it and see. So you have some nice apple layers. What do you say in the Netherlands? Goed appetit. It tastes like a supermarket pastry item. <laughs> I don't know what I expected. I feel like Hema is kind of comparable to Ikea. I didn't get any apple, oh, but there, oh, there are some there. It's very soggy, very heavy, a very dense pastry. It has a lot of syrupy feeling. It's very sticky, but maybe if I eat some of this apple, it'll be better. Definitely better in there. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I feel like this would be not a bad uh, coffee and cake break place. So like Diana said, I think this is comparable to like Ikea in Sweden. Hema is a little bit like the, the smaller Ikea of the Netherlands. And they have it in every city multiple times. And we even have one in Dusseldorf. So it's nice to get some household items. And yeah, it was a full restaurant. This is a fries bowl, frit bowl or something like that with uh, kipstukjes, which sounds like chicken pieces. They have this nice sauce on top, this might be the samurai sauce, and then some pickles cut up. So let's just dig in here. Chicken, chicken piece. piece. And some fries. Let's get a little bit of everything. Here we go. It tastes good. The chicken is like not the best chicken I've ever had. I think it's frozen. You can definitely tell. But the overall dish, again, typical for the Netherlands, is very hearty. It's heavy potatoes with meat, a little bit of pickles, and a nice spicy mayonnaise. I think it's a samurai sauce thing. It's pretty good. And uh, mm. these are not regular French fries. It's a little bit like a flat potato. So like a fried potato slice, and then they just fold it a little bit, which is interesting. Also comes garnish with a little bit of tomato, cucumber. This was eight euros. It's not the cheapest, especially for a place like this, but I also think you get a lot of calories from that. So I have to agree, definitely after a nice shopping for like some household items, you can come here, full restaurant, you can feed the whole family if you wanted to. <laughs> Overall, Hem is not bad. It's not the most amazing food I've ever had, but I feel like it would be a perfect little stop and enjoy your food if you don't know what to eat and everything else is busy. I also think she undersold this thing. This is a proper apple strudel. Like this tastes really good yeah, to me. Yeah, the inside is definitely better. So this time we're out on a Saturday and uh, the pedestrian zone is very quaint. This has a very much smaller town vibe than uh, Rotterdam, Amsterdam so far. Yeah. But it's Saturday and it's fairly busy. So a lot of people out and about and a lot of hustle and bustle. Yeah, so far I really like it. I think the, the narrow streets are very cute. Um, I love the aesthetic, uh, but I want to see a little more because it does feel very small right There's now. There's also a good amount of water, which we should see in a second. And if you're interested in more of our city thoughts and bloopers, we make additional monthly videos on patreon.com slash Deanna and Phil. Shout out to our soulmate patrons, Lauren, Jared, Peggy and Derek, Roger Lupka, Robin, and Gary and Amanda Day. Thank you. Continuing this food tour, we make our way back towards the Canal Street, bringing us to a very cute and quaint restaurant for the next stop in this food tour. All right, for our second stop, we went to a soup place. And this is something we never normally do, but apparently soup is very popular in the Netherlands. And it's actually right over there, right in the heart of Utrecht, here close to this moat. They have these waterways right in the heart and it feels super cute, super quaint, Dude, super romantic. It is so cute. I love the city so far. Me too. The soup place is over there. It's called Soup Er Utrecht. Super Utrecht. Super, super, super Utrecht. They have always three soups of the day. 
um, we chose a tomato soup because for today she said that is the most Dutch one that you can get. Yeah, they had a pumpkin miso soup that sounded so good, but we decided to go for the classic. And if you look at this, she said it's not just a regular tomato soup. It has some little bit of cream in there. And I think uh, this is parsley. It's very thick. There's it's some chunks in there. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Probably onion something. So tomato soup takeaway. This was around seven euros. So here we go. Oh man, immediately, very nice, but it tastes a little bit like a, a bolognese sauce, more so than a soup. Really? Because it's thick and it's like chunky, so I want to put pasta in there. But dude, it's very nice, it's so flavorful. You know, I'm used to like, if anything, tomato soup, I think about these like canned ones for like 50 cents from the supermarket and they're very plain. This is absolutely not plain, this is nicely seasoned and uh, with the cream in there, gives a little twirly look. Okay, but what you really need with a soup is a piece of bread. Yeah, it comes with this nice piece of bread. It's half a slice of what looks like a very big rye bread. It's soft and fluffy though. Yeah, it smells really nice. It has a crust of poppy seeds and it feels very fresh. So dip let's it in. Dip, dip it that in. in there. Oh, that looks so good. That looks very, really, really good. Really good. One might say super good. <laughs> it has this light sourdough flavor to it. Yeah, it looks like and sourdough. Man, I wish they would have given us uh, five of these slices because I would just dip this until the soup is gone. But this is most definitely, and I can speak from massive experience here, the best tomato soup that I've ever had. Okay, he has not had a lot of tomato soup, just for clarity. It's true. I just want to point out all these people that come by with stand-up pedal boats, there's little motor boats, there's like rubber. Dingies, whatever. It's, it's beautiful here. It's an it's awesome livelihood. All right, so I have had a decent amount of tomato soup. I feel like in the US there's a lot of tomato soup. I associate that with grilled cheese though. Ooh. And instead of a grilled cheese, we got a nice cheese stick. She highly recommended this. I think this is around 250 euros. And she said, you must try the so cheese stick. so big in your hand. I think I'm just gonna go for it. This is, <laughs> this is how we're doing it. Look at that. Oh. That looks good. Dip that stick Ooh. in that moist pot of tomato soup and now in your mouth, yes. Mmm, wow, that's really good. It's definitely creamier than the tomato soup I'm used to. This is almost like a cheesy crouton, almost. It's not quite as hard, but it's definitely got this like nice crunch contrast into this. You've got some celery, it looks like carrot chunks. Do you see that? Some chunkies in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Onion has a little bit of a spiced kick at the end, not spicy or anything. When I was looking up Dutch soup places, I was really looking for pea soup because I think that's one of the classics in the Netherlands, but that's more of a winter dish. So there's not a lot of pea soup out yet. I mean, as you can tell, it's still barely summer. We're hanging on to the last sunny days of summer right now. And if we had this soup place nearby, I would totally get this. This is awesome. We quickly battle for the final bites before we continue along the canal. How is it down there? It's so nice. Dude, this place is very quaint, super cute. I read an article saying that Utrecht was the most romantic city in the Netherlands, and I kind of feel the vibe. Also, check that boat out. That is the way to do it, man. You don't even need the lying. paddle. We need that boat. Jealous of all of the water activities, perfect pups, and bike culture, we make our way to a familiar site so Phil can get a quick snack after losing that soup battle. Ooh, the car souffle looks super freshly made in here. We have grill burger, but we're gonna try the kip burger. This is the one. There it is. Kip burger, finally. So we had to stop at the FIBO quickly, the vending machine place, you know it from former videos probably. But there's one thing I mentioned last time in Rotterdam that I really wanted to get and it's the Kip burger. This is the Kip burger, four euro, freshly from the wall, the vending machine. Wow. It sounds, it smells very artificial. Okay, we have a sesame bun here, which is, okay, it looks funny. There's this like yellow, neon green, almost-ish mayonnaise remoulade thing in there. Then we have a kip patty, the chicken patty, and the bottom, that's it. Not a very impressive looking burger, but maybe the taste is good. And after all, it's just vending machine food, right? So kip burger, here we go. <laughs> the 
This would be so dangerous if he lived in the Netherlands. We'd be going there too often. It tastes way better than it looks. Really? It's pretty decent. Because it looks I mean, pretty sad. The bun is a little um, dry on the bottom, but for a quick snack, there's nothing wrong with this. The ratio is okay, actually. Um, the bread is a little dry, but I like that neon yellowish sauce on it. And there's a bit of lettuce. It's actually, it's not that bad. I want to have the Dutch eat this a lot. Um, I will inhale this in two more bites. Dutch vending machines strike again. And I'm gonna go on. And before heading home back to Germany, we have a new tradition where we go into a Dutch supermarket and buy a few things that we like or that we don't have available near us. We found some articles in the past that we really liked. So we got to stock up before we go to Germany where we can't get everything. And maybe we'll find something else here that is of interest like cheese. So we've tried this stuff before and it's so good. We're probably going to bring a new one home. Mm. Also, we really like the uh, peanut stuff here. And some people said you can get the satay for at home. And I'm not going to get this because we already got it last time. So it's sitting at home ready to be consumed. We're also tempted by the bitter balan and the fricandle, the frozen ones, but our drive is almost three hours, so that would defrost. So I'm looking at their Asian section. We have a decent amount of Asian supermarkets in Dusseldorf. Um, so I think we're good. <laughs> we don't need anything. Oh. Yeah, we have a lot of like Chinese, Japanese, a lot of Indian supermarkets, but not a lot of Indonesian. All right, we'll get a rendang sauce. I really have to hold myself back not to get another big vla. Uh, so you're gonna get I a small vla? No, we did it last time and I drank it within like two hours. I filled my, I, I had a stomach, stomach pain afterwards. Also, I'm gaining a little weight, I have to be good here. They have a lot of pancakes here. They even have banana pancakes, right? That should be banana. Yeah. That looks cool. Small. And a lot of bows. That's awesome. Yeah, and there's the American ones. Nobody buys that. They don't want these. Here's the puffertjes. We just put those in the microwave. There you go. Dude, I haven't seen these before. These are like stroop cookies. Cook, cooking, cooking. And some stroop waffles. There we go. All right, so that was our Dutch food tour here from Utrecht, where we kind of filled in the gap of our other food videos here from the Netherlands. And I'm still very impressed with the food and I absolutely love Utrecht. I really love the city layout and how walkable a lot of it is, how bikeable a lot of it is, and I like how Boat kayakable, boatable. boatable the city is, yeah. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Ik ben night voor de verkoop. Verkoop. I don't know what that says, but that bunny is so cute.